Hi, welcome back to Looking at Hollywood. We have a wonderful show today. If you're like me and you love those silent movie classics and swooned over people like Douglas Fairbanks and Rudolph Valentino, well, you must have swooned over a man who was a matinee idol of the silent films. His name is Francis Le with us today. He has continued throughout the decades in film and stage. What an interesting life from Prague to, a ca to California. And now he's dropping the skippy low. So let's look in on them now. Francis Leather, a man of two worlds. I mean, grew up where? Where actually grew up in Parade or? Big upon? Where did you grow up actually? As I a grew child? up uh, in the world. But as a child? As a child in Prague. In Prague. Growing up there. Yeah. Memories. You have some early memories back there at this moment? Uh, well, which kind of millions of memories? Some great memories like getting into the business as an actor, say. As an actor? When you wanted to be an actor. Well, I started out as a <coughs> as an extra man, you see. I started in the theater in Prague as an apprentice uh -huh. in the theater. And uh, gradually, you know, one way or the bigger theaters, bigger theater, until I came finally to Berlin, then London, New York, and so First theater as, as an actor in Berlin. Big hit. Went to London, Vienna, Matinee Idol. First, the Don't very so first play. Do you remember the very first play that you, did, you starred in, in, in Berlin, say? Romeo. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. I saw that clip. Mm -hmm. I wish I had brought that clip. You're lucky. Something yeah. happened on stage with the lady on Romeo and Juliet, your lovely leading lady. Elizabeth Bird. Right. But nothing. Something about nothing with you. You controlled her. I understand that she was drinking. The director fed her some liquor or something. No. 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 I saw a clip. Well, Someone interviewed it must have her. been water, but. No, I don't remember at all that she ever drank. On stage, I'm talking about. She didn't. No, she wasn't drinking. But something happened with the scene. You don't remember that particular scene? I saw an interview about Berlin, and you were in the interview, and she was, and she explained that. Uh -huh. Well, she drank poison, of course. Right. In the of course. <laughs> <No>. Yes. <laughs> anyway, came to London with the show, big hit. No, it wasn't. The first show I did was not a big hit. It was a musical called Meet My Sister. Right. And it lasted one week. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. It's London. Yeah. Then you came. Then what but happened? But it was j just an accident. So <coughs> after the <laughs> one week closing, I went with a friend of mine to the to the Savoy Hotel, and I went to Pardon Expression the men's room <laughs> and going back from the men's room to the dining room a gentleman stops me and he says now Mr. Letter now that your play is closing what are you going to do and I said well, I suppose I'm going to go to Berlin <laughs> and he said are you in a hurry I said no I'm not can you wait until Thursday said, sure mm -hmm. so I have a play on that a lady has written by the name of Anthony, and that would be a leading part, would be just right for you. So can you wait until Thursday? So I waited, and uh, I spoke to the producer and director, and that's how I got to play in English in London. And that's how it began. Big hit. Became one of the matinee idols. I, didn't, I didn't even know what you, that expression you meant. <laughs> you didn't know? No. But Not you arrived in America, you knew then. Yes, but not in London. Not I know on matinee. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Hmm. Arrived in London, from London to America in Broadway. Which show was that? It was Autumn Croak. It was the same play that, that helped me in London. It did. That's, who's in that with you? Do you remember? In London? No, here in New York on Broadway. It was Dorothy Gish. Dorothy Gish. That's right. And that's Lillian's, Lillian's sister, isn't it? Oh. Lillian's, Lillian's sister. Gish, yeah. Sister, yes. An angel. Was he? You did some silent movies back, though. Yeah, that was in Berlin. In Berlin. What were some of the silent movies? Well, uh, there was a... Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Let me dig, dig, dig. <laughs> well, I did uh, Büchse de Pandora. Uh -huh. Then 
All kinds of, I can't But the remember. one I loved is with that lady, the, the, the silent lady. I saw a clip on her, too. You saw everything. I see, yeah, I saw this particular clip, the silent movie you did. I wish I brought that today, darn it. Then came to New York. Then you went to RKO. Something happened. RKO signed you up immediately to come to Hollywood. Yes, after, I, after the opening in New York, right. they shined, signed me up to RKO. Signed you up immediately. First film in, in America. What was the very first? It was called Man of Two Words. I was Eskimo. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yes. Uh -huh. Man, really? And then from what happened there, from there? Well, then I did uh, romance in Manhattan and all kinds of plays. Uh, um, <coughs> and uh, I was working, with working with uh, Claudette Colbert. You worked with her. Yes. And a wonderful film called Mat uh, Manhattan, is it? Or Man no, Midnight. Matinee? Midnight. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah. Tell me about that movie. Who was also in that film? Well, it was uh, Don Amici. Uh -huh. He played the big role and um, all kinds of very good actors and actresses. Uh -huh. Going back, uh, Max Reinhardt, you worked with this great man. Well, darling, Tell he was the one who d directed Romeo and, Romeo and Juliet in Berlin uh, with Berlin. Elizabeth Bergner. That's right. But something happened. That's what I said. But she, she, Max Reinhardt gave her some liquor in her coffee on the stage, and you can't remember that, that scene? No, I don't. She just, okay, but you, she told me she controlled, you controlled her on stage. No. Yes, she did, no. yes, 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 it was no an interview. No man could ever control a woman or two, you know, naive. <laughs> I like that. That was a big, that was a big hit on, a uh, big hit in Berlin. You mean Romeo and Juliet? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> it's a very good play. <laughs> uh-huh. Max Reinhardt, tell me about him. Tell me more. A about genius. Him. A genius. And uh, you're using the word genius. What do you mean, a genius? Like, tell me more about it. Well, I, unless you, you consider yourself to be a genius. No, I don't. No, you don't. You are no. too modest. Well, may I, may I give you a definition of a genius? Yes. A genius is a, a person who doesn't know what they are doing. Oh, okay. It comes naturally. It comes, yes, comes naturally. There's a, in Boston, the university had. Uh, research done on the creative, the creative mind. Right. And there was a definition of genius, and they interviewed many, many real uh, <laughs> geniuses of what it is, and uh -huh. all of them said, "I don't know. It just comes to me." Uh huh. Leather, Dracula. The Return of Dracula. <gasps> Today the kids you love, they love that movie. That. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, if there's one thing, is there one thing I hated, it was that. <laughs> you hated that film? Of, of course, because I did, I was strict, I was strict into it. My oh, you were strict into it, ah. Oh. Yes, what my, happened? Agent, my agent sent me to this company, and um, they talked about, <laughs> and I said, now look here, I, no, no, but Francis, we are going to, to, to <laughs> we're going to make fun of it. Uh -huh. This is not, you're not going to play Dracula. You just make fun of it. But they didn't have a script. Mm -hmm. Stupidly, I accepted. And more and more it came. It was the same as everything else before right. Dracula. And so I became Dracula. And many times it brings up, and I just, if there was <laughs> you a. You don't like that? If there, was a big a, hit, the kids if there was a death penalty on murder, <laughs> I would have committed all of those who liked that picture. The cult following. You have a great cult following. The kids love it. The Return of Dracula. No. And you ever see it? Oh, yeah. The kids love it today. They don't love believe it. it. Don't ah, believe yes, it. yes. I didn't mention it. Leather, you did ah. Gay Deception. What a great movie that is. Yeah, that was with, charming. With was uh, charming. Joel McRae's wife, Frances D. Frances D, yeah. Oh, what a lovely lady. I should say. Joel McRae, they were married. Were they married at the time when you did this film? No. Right. No. No. It's no. called Gay Deception. You did this at RKO, was it RKO? That's right. You did how many films at RKO? You did a lot of films there. Yeah. A lot. It didn't. The, the what kind of studio was it? Last, what RKO, kind of studio was RKO? RKO? But what kind of studio? Of well, the heads of the studio and how they was, treat the stars. You know, Mr. Hughes had started this studio, and he had some excellent people who were writers, producers, directors, and. Right. We had good writers those days. Oh, yes. We of don't course. have writers today. Francis. Oh, yes. Oh, Francis, yes. Francis, look at me. You're saying yes. Do we really have good writers today for films? I, 
You think so? Well, absolutely, absolutely. I do, I do, I do. You do? Uh, I tell you, Hollywood has not changed at all to the worst. I think it's, been, it's better now than ever. Really? Because you've been here all these years, you would know. Yeah, since 32. Yeah, wow. since 33. And you don't think there has been a change for the worse? No, absolutely not. Because, you see, television particularly has changed the whole making of pictures tremendously. I think it right. has been a blessing to making motion pictures. Everything now is better and better and better. Interesting. Walking down Hollywood. I can't, he's lived here, I don't know. Let's see the clip from uh, Gay Deception with uh, oh, Aunt, a uh, Francis clip. D. Let's show They're it. They're gonna okay? love it. Let's show it, Annie. Thanks. You know his face is very familiar. I feel sure we met before somewhere. I didn't even know you. Well, it was a long time ago. Years and years, probably. Will you eat that? Oh, I beg your pardon. I hope you don't like me any the less because I'm Prince. Prince. It's not my fault. I was born that way. You should see how funny you look with that glass eye. Oh, uh, Your Highness, sir. Uh, uh, how does Your Highness like America? Uh, your Highness. America? Oh, it's a wonderful country. You just have to reach out and take whatever you need. <laughs> Is that how you got those clothes? Did you kick me, Your Highness? Oh, I am so sorry, Your Highness. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. The more the merrier. The way that I should be much worse. Uh, thank you, Your Highness. Oh, well, uh, I hear Your Highness is an excellent dancer. Excellent. I got this medal for my dancing. Really? I know where you got that medal. Oh, I should be delighted. Come on, let's dance. Wasn't it great? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that was great. Francis Leather, what has been the highest point in your career? High well, point in your, what has been the high point in your career? Stick in your mind. There were so many. Really? There has been that many. Yeah. There's not one that sticks in your mind that's... Has Francis Leather enjoyed life uh, in all these years? I mean, now you are talking not about pictures. No, we're talking about you, Francis. Life, well, I tell you, there are too many things that bother me. <laughs> really? Yes. Not the whole picture of the world, you know. Uh-huh. Like what? Give us an example. Like the possibility of war. Ah. Oh. So this... And I'm the kind of guy who doesn't just sit back. I, in 1937, I think, I started an organization for World Peace, called World Peace Federation, and since then I've done many, many things. So if you ask me if I, en if I enjoy life, those are the things that are. Well, what is your philosophy in life then? My philosophy in life is uh, <laughs> that the good people should take the <laughs> government of the ha world in hand. Mm -hmm. What's the best advice that you could give young actors? Because you are teaching now. You've been teaching for many years. What is the best advice you can give young actors? The best advice to give a young actor is the thing, the fact to learn uh, indefatigably, cons constantly. The, it is such a difficult, really difficult profession. And uh, that uh, is important to know how to overcome those difficulties. Difficulties. It is difficult. Have you overcome these difficulties in your early age? I didn't overcome them, but I know they exist. <laughs> uh -huh. First of all, you see, the basic thing about, uh, I mean, we do, of course, we have to differentiate between singers, mm -hmm. between dancers, between actors, directors. But they're still entertainers. They're still out there entertaining. So how I could you just point point one? A singer is also an actress. Comedian is also an actor. Of course. So you're, right. you're right. You're right. I mean, I'm, no, I'm not right. I'm just explaining. You are right, <laughs> <laughs> Francis. You're easy. <laughs> no. That's why I work no, so but, much. But to come back, to come back about the most important thing to realize for an actor, right, is to realize that an actor has got to pretend 
that whatever he says, that it is an expression of a thought in his mind, and that thought actually is only a transference from the writer right. that an actor has got to t carry to, out. To the audience. That's right. Absolutely. Your teaching. Tell me about your teaching. You've been teaching for years here. You have... Uh, Since 1957. You've, you've... Annie, he started this organization, this theater of... Uh, no, it's, it's the American National Academy. Oh, Tell me more about sure. that. It's here in Hollywood. You make lectures there uh, three no, times no, a week? No, we have a, it's a regular school. It is a regular we, school. We teach ballet, modern jazz, tap dancing, singing, uh, acting, uh, anything. You, that so this is, you this founded before. the school in the 50s? So all the young kids come from all over the world? Not only young kids. No. <laughs> Look at me. So you no, we have, no we have anything from the age of 3 to 80. Uh-huh. Some of the people that come out of your school, some of this, anyone sticks in your mind that I made couldn't it? I uh, couldn't in say the 50s, it's it? particularly, you know, we have, we have one girl that <laughs> was in the first row already, she became a star. No, uh -huh. I couldn't. What was your life during the war, Francis Leather? Who did you? During the, uh, during the war, was it tough? You grew up in, in back uh, in, the, in the war days, you were here, right? Yeah, during was, the war? Uh, the second war, second, I was here. You were here yeah. as an actor. Uh, one of the yeah. matinee idols during the war. Yeah. Don't use that title. Okay. Uh oh. As an actor, <laughs> what has been the hardest for Francis Leather in your life? Are you talking about life or acting in my hardest, profession? Hardest, just for you. I'm talking about Francis Leather, not just. Not to have achieved by far what I would like to. What would you like to achieve? Change the world. You're 93 the... years old. 93, Francis. You're sitting here telling me you want to achieve more. Are you, you work a lot. I should you get say. up. What's your day like? Well. <laughs> what time do you get up? It varies. I don't know. It varies. I don't have a discipline to say six years. Is your secret because, it's not a secret, is it because, because you're vital. You walk, you do, you think, you do. You're very, uh, 93. He's Come the on. handsomest 93 I've uh, ever seen. Is he the handsomest? Oh, yes. yes. Francis, what is your day like? What time of the day do you get up? What do you do? What, how do you every live? Time I, every time I wake up, I <laughs> consider the things I have to do, and I do them. Why do you keep yourself busy? Because I cannot help it. <laughs> that is you. That's the secret. <laughs> that is the secret. What has been the happiest memory for you? Perhaps meeting my wife. Oh. Uh, you're married. How many years? 53. <gasps> 53. How nice. That's great. Lovely Marilyn. 50 Marian. 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 53. What a lovely. Where did you meet her? In <laughs> Toronto. Toronto, Canada. Yeah. Were you doing a play there at the time? Yes, and she came backstage in the intermission. Uh huh. And that's what happened? Fell in Not love right. right away? It took a long time, but that's where it started. Uh huh. Tell me about Claudette Colbert working with this great lady. Who? Claudette Colbert, working with her. I love her. She's so great. I think she was a thorough professional. Thorough professional. I mean, she. Uh, you know, there are actresses who come on the stage. It starts. She's supposed to be there at nine o'clock, and they come and so they uh -huh. go to the dress, and they <laughs> uh -huh. don't. They are not ready until nine thirty or something. Right. No, she was the thorough professional. Always ready, always knowing the dialogue, and doing exactly what the director told her to do. What's some of the famous directors that you enjoy working with, Francis Leather? Some of the famous directors that you enjoy working with, or unfamous. Who did you enjoy working with the most? Which director? Yeah. Well, I tell you, I always uh, considered a director the one person who really knows how I should do it. Mm -hmm. And I adore directors. I just uh, I admire them tremendously. You direct, you, you've, as a matter of fact, you direct uh, a TV, uh, I think a television thing you had, TV, I was, yeah, I was theater. One, it won't, oh, yes, I directed a tremendous amount of plays. Plays, but theater. Motion picture. Uh, but a TV series. You directed uh, 77 Sunset, also, I yeah, think. Something, yeah. You did that. Ed Byrne? Yes, he, he said 77 Sunset. Tell me about that. 
<laughs> How do you use your now? Francis Leather. So you've done that. You started the theater for TV for the theater. That's First, right. he found it. He's a dangerous man. He knows. Too he knows much. more than you think. He yeah. founded the theater for television. The first dramatic shows That's on right. TV. Oh, really? He's the founder in he the 50s. But we, no. we had a very... Tell me about that. How, what, we how had a marvelous sponsor who wanted that, and so we did it. You did crafts, all oh, the wow. coupons. Wow. I mean, he did all these great... History, the yeah, history. The, tell me about the crafts theater. Tell me about these things. Well, they were as nice as you are. Oh, come I mean, on, Francis. Yes, I mean, it is, <laughs> it is very difficult, you know. The most difficult thing I would say in life... What has been? Yeah, go ahead. In life, as in the profession, is to... And in marriage, I would say, is to find equal thinking people. Equal thinking people. That's right. Now, what do you think is the reason for so many broken marriages? Is because the difference between differences that exist between the parties. Right. And so, the most uh, desirable thing to f is to find people who un who think the same, have the same taste. And believe in the same things. Does what your happened wife? to opposites attract? <laughs> Does what your... happened to opposites oh, attract? Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> Whoever invented that should be hanged. I think the, the, the same should person that invented matinee go, aisle. <laughs> opposites attract them. None. That's, that's the worst. That's the worst. Is it thing. really? Of course. Of course. So you now, believe? what is the reason for people disagreements? Uh -huh. So your wife and you get along beautifully. You're I wouldn't very say much beautifully, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> the attempt is there. The attempt. I see. Have you ever turned down a part that you regret it later, Francis? Oh, yes, and I regretted it very much. Really? No, one, the one thing is the Dracula. Mm -hmm. But then I was Because of, of the it, director? Of, is that why? No, but of course, because of the ignorance of the script. The people told me, well, Francis, I said, well, but it was, well, we'll do, we'll do it uh -huh. long. Uh huh. So you. Direct still? You're still directing? Of At 93 course. years old? You're still. <laughs> I mean, Francis. Well, they still got to That's do called with 39 it. and holding. Okay, 39. <laughs> My God, that's a beautiful age. I can't believe it. I'm looking at you. You're <laughs> looking at a very impertinent question. How, are you, how old are you? I'm in my 60s. Well, you're like... You look wonderful. I know. I look like. Yes, you I look, look wonderful. Yeah, I look a young <laughs> boy. <laughs> Francis. Looking back, are you writing a book about your life? No, I don't have the time for that. You don't <laughs> no. have the time to no, write? No, no, no. I was asked many times about those writings, but I just don't have the time. Do you keep memoirs, men, little, little notes in your memories, little papers? No, I always, always new projects. Uh-huh. Yes, projects. You st why do you keep yourself so busy with these different projects and not with a, a nice, a nice... I cannot help it, dear. I understand. <laughs> Ellen Raines. You worked with this lovely lady, Ella Raines. Loved this actress. Do you oh, remember Ella Raines? She? A wonderful actress. Tell me about Ella Raines. Excuse me, which picture? Ella Raines, wasn't she? Oh, I think she was in Dracula with you, wasn't she? Oh, oh let's get back to Dracula. <laughs> okay, we won't talk about Dracula. <laughs> This is going to be Dracula Part Two for ben him. Ben Casey. Sure. Okay, let's get on. You did Ben Casey too. The Untouchables. Ben Casey. Wow. You've appeared in many, many television shows. Uh, all characters, all kinds of things you do. And yet, still <laughs> working. Still not enough. Not enough. So you didn't tell me your day of time you get up in the morning. I like to know. You didn't tell me that. I wonder well, what three o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock, it changes all the time. In the morning, when I wake two in the morning? Up, of course, of course. You get up at course. two in the morning? Of course. And what does Francis Leather do at two in the morning? After you yeah, get what all your... What he has to do. You go to work at two, three in the morning, Francis? <laughs> not what do you call somebody writing something down at work. That's not a work. Uh-huh. So you enjoyed your life. Would you uh, say you had a good time, Francis? No. <laughs> you no, no, I wouldn't say good uh, because of the difference between what I want and what I have achieved. What, what do you want? I want uh, primarily for the world to grow up to that realization that it is absolutely possible it can be changed to what it should be instead what it is. 
So Francis Leather is a little concerned man out there. He's a man who's concerned with the world. What's happening in the news, what the world is all about. You're concerned for the human beings. Because all that is, can you imagine that two or three people are responsible if in the history of mankind, mm -hmm. most the two or three people, mostly one person right. responsible for the life of millions of dead people, Napoleon, Hitler, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the, the absurdity of the situation? What do you think is going to happen? Our world is very violent today. What do you think is going to happen, Francis? I'm not a prophet. I wouldn't know. I but you, what's your feeling is like? Because you've lived, you've tasted life, what does Francis Leather think is what's going to happen out there in this world today? As I so say, I wouldn't it. know. I wouldn't know what is going to happen. I would what, do you, what should happen. You want, you're helping it to not I to What should happen, you know? Exactly after the first, after the Second World War, there was a United Nations. Of course, that is the, right. I would say, that is the ultimate, ultimate goal of the world, the United Nations. Uh -huh. So Francis Leather is a man of of concerned. Uh, do you believe in fate? Uh, in fate. <laughs> you mean it's so un unalterable? Mm. No, I believe. Is it's going to happen? It's going to yeah, happen? No, just a minute. <laughs> the man is the, <laughs> the <laughs> there's something, the man is the maker of his fate. A man is maker of his fate. So it's up to a man to make his own fate. That's right. I believe that too. That is my, my belief. That is my belief uh -huh. also. I believe you go out there and you make your own fate. It happens. People just let things happen that it's going to happen. It doesn't do that. It just but doesn't work that way. Yes, work, 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 work. You see, I tell this to the people at the academy. I say, it's work is the answer to everything. Now, you see, I say, for instance, you see Shirley MacLaine. Right. Terrific. Now, I was in a show with her. What show no, were you in? It with? was the, the Sleeping Prince. Ah. Okay. And you have no idea how this girl works. Shirley uh, MacLaine. Yes, of course. B besides scenes or something like that, she comes early in the afternoon. Or oh, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> oh, uh, nothing. Uh, D Domingo. Uh -huh. Is she nothing uh, comes by itself. It doesn't. No. no. no, no you no. got to go out there and work no. for it. No. Absolutely, I believe that in no. life. Now look at yourself. You are a fantastic career. No, I just... Oh, yes. I, I, it I has just begun for him, too, Francis. <laughs> Francis Leather. <laughs> Any regrets in life? The show. Millions. <laughs> That's it. Millions. Any regrets, millions, Francis? Millions. Millions. <laughs> like what? Give an example. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest regret is myself. <laughs> greatest regret? Oh, yes, I wish I was different. So you don't like yourself, then? No, You're you? no. <laughs> Let me dig, dig, dig. <laughs> well, I did uh, books at Pandora, uh -huh. then uh, all kinds of. I can't but the remember. one I loved is with that lady, the dra the th silent lady. I saw a clip on her too. You saw everything. I see. Yeah, I saw this particular clip, the silent movie you did. I wish I brought that today, darn it. Then came to New York. Then you went to RKO. Something happened. RKO signed you up immediately to come to Hollywood. Yes, after I after the opening in New York, right. they signed signed me up to RKO. Signed you up immediately. First film in in America. What was the very first? It was called Man of Two Worlds. I was Eskimo. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Man, really? And then from what happened there, from there? Well, then I did uh, romance in Manhattan and all kinds of plays. Uh, um, uh, and uh, I was working with working with uh, Claudette Colbert, you worked with her. Yes. In a wonderful film called Mat uh, Manhattan, is it or Mat no, Matinee? Midnight. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah. Tell me about that movie. Who was also in that film? Well, it was uh, Don Amici. Uh -huh. He played the big role and um, all kinds of very good actors and actresses. Uh huh. Going back, uh, Max Reinhardt. You worked with this great man. Well, darling, Tell he was the one who did directed Romeo and, Romeo and Juliet in Berlin uh, with Berlin. Elizabeth Bergner. That's right. But something happened. That's what I said. But she, she, Max Reinhardt gave her some liquor in her coffee on the stage. And you can't remember that, that scene? No, I don't. She just, okay. 
But you, she told me she controlled, you controlled her on stage. No. Yes, she did. No. Yes, 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 yes. It was no an No man could ever control a woman or two. You know, naive. <laughs> I like that, that was a big. That was a big hit on a uh, big hit in Berlin. You mean Romeo and Juliet? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's a very good play. Uh -huh. Max Reinhardt, tell me about him. Tell me more. A about genius, him. a genius, and uh, you're using the word genius. What do you mean, a genius? Like, tell me more about it. Well, I, unless you, you consider yourself to be a genius. No, I don't. No, you don't. You are no. too modest. Well, may I, may I give you a definition of a genius? Yes. A genius is a person who doesn't know what they are doing. Oh, okay. It comes naturally. It comes, yes, it comes naturally. There's a, in Boston, the university had a research done on the creative, the creative mind. Right. And there was a definition of genius, and they interviewed many, many real uh, lady <laughs> Elizabeth Bird. Right. But nothing. Something about nothing with you. You controlled her. I understand that she was drinking. The director fed her some liquor or something. No, no. no. I saw a clip. Well, Someone interviewed it must have her. Been water, but no, I don't remember at all that she ever drank. On stage, I'm talking about. She didn't. No, she wasn't drinking. But something happened with the scene. You don't remember that particular scene? I saw an interview. It was about Berlin, and you were in the interview, and she was, and she explained that. Uh -huh. Well, she drank poison, of course. Right. In the of course, <laughs> no. yes. Anyway, came to London with the show, big hit. No, it wasn't. The first show I did was not a big hit. It was a musical called Meet My Sister, Right. and it lasted one week. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Is London. Yeah. Then you can't, then what But happened? it was j just an accident. So <coughs> after the <laughs> one week closing, I went with a friend of mine to the, to the Savoy Hotel, and I went to, pardon expression, the men's room. <laughs> and going back from the men's room to the dining room, a gentleman stops me and he says, now, Mr. Letter, now that your play is closing, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I suppose I'm going to go to Berlin. Uh -huh. And he said, are you in a hurry? I said, no, I'm not. Can you wait until Thursday? Sure. Mm -hmm. So I have a play on, that a lady has written by the name of Anthony, and that would be a leading part would be just right for you. So can you wait until Thursday? So I waited, and uh, I spoke to the producer and director, and that's how I got to play in English in London. And that's how it began. Big hit. Became one of the matinee idols. I, didn't, I didn't even know what you, that expression you meant. You didn't know? No. But not you arrived in America, you knew then. Yes, but not in London. Not I know on matinee idol. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. hmm. Arrived in London, from London to America in Broadway, which show was that? It was Autumn Croak. It was the same play that, that helped me in London. It did. That's, who was in that with you? Do you remember? In London? No, here in, in New York on Broadway. It was Dorothy Gish. Dorothy Gish. That's right. And that's Angel. Lillian's, Lillian's sister, isn't it? Oh. Lillian's, Lillian's sister. Gish, yeah. Sister, yes. An angel. Was he? You did some silent movies back, though. In, yeah, that was in Berlin. In Berlin. What were some of the silent movies? Well, uh, there was a... Welcome back to Looking at Hollywood. 
We have a wonderful show today. If you're like me and you love those silent movie classics and swooned over people like Douglas Fairbanks and Rudolph Valentino, well, you must have swooned over a man who was a matinee idol of the silent films. His name is Francis Lee with us today. He has continued throughout the decades in film and stage. What an interesting life from Prague to, a, to California. And now he's dropping with Skippy Low. So let's look in on them now. Francis Leather, a man of two worlds. I mean, grew up where? Where actually grew up in Parad or? Vigapan. Where did you grow up actually? As I a grew child? up uh, in the world. But as a child? As a child in Prague. In Prague. Growing up there. Yeah. Memories. You have some early memories back there at this moment? Uh, oh, well, which kind of millions of memories? Some great memories like getting into the business as an actor, say. As an actor? When you wanted to be an actor. Well, I started out as a <coughs> as an extra man, you see. I started in the theater in Prague as an apprentice uh -huh. in the theater. And uh, gradually, you know, one way, uh, the bigger theaters, bigger theater, until I came finally to Berlin, then London, New York, and so First theater as, as an actor in Berlin. Big hit. Went to London, Vienna, Matinee Idol. First, the Don't very so first fair. play. Do you remember the very first play that you, did, you starred in, in, in Berlin, say? Romeo. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. I saw that clip. Mm -hmm. I wish I had brought that clip. Yeah, lucky Something you. happened on stage with the lady on Romeo and Juliet. Your lovely leading lady. Interesting. Walking down Hollywood. I can't, he's lived here. I don't know. Let's see the clip from uh, Gay Deception with uh, oh, Aunt, that's a great uh, Francis clip. D. Let's show They're it. They're going to love it. Let's show it, Annie. Thanks. face is very familiar. I feel sure we met before somewhere. Didn't even know you. Well, it was a long time ago. Years and years, probably. Will you eat that? Oh, big pardon. I hope you don't like me any the less because I'm Prince. Prince. It's not my fault. I was born that way. You should see how funny you look with that glass eye. Oh, uh, your Highness, sir. Uh, how does your highness like America? Uh, America is a wonderful country. You just have to reach out and take whatever you need. Is that how you got those clothes? Did you kick me, your highness? Oh, oh I am so sorry, your highness. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. The more the merrier, the way that I should be much worse. Uh, thank you, your highness. Oh, uh, I hear your highness is an excellent dancer. Excellent. <laughs> I got this medal for my dancing. <laughs> I know where you got that medal. Oh, I should be delighted. <laughs> Come on, let's dance. That was wonderful, wasn't it? Wasn't it, it great? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that was great. Francis Leather, what has been the highest point in your career? High Wait, point in your, what has been the high point in your career? Stick in your mind. There were so many. Really? There's been that many. Yeah. There's not one that sticks in your mind that's. Has Francis Leather enjoyed life uh, in all these years? I know you're yeah, talking not about pictures. No, we're talking about you, Francis. Life, well, I tell you, there are too many things that bother me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. No, the whole picture of the world, you know. Uh huh. Like what? Give us an example. Like the possibility of war. Oh. So this and I'm the kind of a guy who doesn't just sit back. I, in 1937, I think, I started an organization for world peace called World Peace Federation. And since then, I've done many, many things. So if you ask me if I, in, if I enjoy life, those are the things that are... But what is your philosophy in life, then? My philosophy in life is... Uh, <laughs> that the good people should take the <laughs> government of the world in hand. Mm -hmm. What's the best advice that you could give young actors? Geniuses of what it is. And uh -huh. all of them said, I don't know. It just comes to me. Uh -huh. Leather, tracular. 
the return of Dracula. It's, today the kids <gasps> love, they love that movie. That. No, 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 no. <laughs> but if there's one thing, is there one thing I hated, it was that. <laughs> you hated that film? Of, of course, because I tell you, I was strict. I was strict into it. Oh, my you agents, tricked into it, ah. Oh. Yes, what my, happened? Agent, my agent sent me to this company, and um, they talked about, <laughs> and I said, no, look here, I, no, no, but Francis, we are going to, to, to <laughs> we're going to make fun of it. Uh -huh. This is not, you're not going to play Dracula, you just make fun of it. But they didn't have a script. Mm -hmm. Stupidly, I accepted. And more and more it came, it was the same as everything else before right. Dracula, and so I became Dracula. And many times it brings up, and I just, if there was <laughs> you a... You don't like that? If there but was it's a big a, hit, the kids... If there was a death penalty on murder, <laughs> I would have committed all of those who liked that picture. The cult following. You have a great cult following. The kids love it. The Return of Dracula. No. And you ever see it? Oh, yeah. The kids love it today. They don't love believe it. it, don't believe it. Ah, yes, yes. I didn't mention it. Leather, you did ah. Gay Deception. What a great movie that is. Yeah, that was with, charming. With was uh, charming. Joel McRae's wife, Frances D. Frances D, yeah. Oh, what a lovely lady. I should say. Joel McRae, they were married. Were they married at the time when you did this film? No. Right. No. No. It's no. called Gay Deception. You did this at RKO, was it RKO? That's right. You did how many films at RKO? You did a lot of films there. Yeah. A lot. It didn't. The, the what kind of studio was it? What RKO, kind of studio was RKO? RKO? But what kind of studio? Uh, well, the heads of the studio and how they was, treat the stars. You know, Mr. Hughes had started this studio, and he had some excellent people who were writers, producers, directors, and Right. We had good writers those days. Oh, yes. We don't course. have writers today. Francis. Oh, yes. Oh, Francis, yes. Francis, look at me. You're saying yes. Do we really have good writers today for films? I, you think so? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. I do. I do. I do. You do? I, I tell you, Hollywood has not changed at all to the worst. I think it's, been, it's better now than ever. Really? Because you've been here all these years, you would know. Yeah, since 32. Yeah, wow. since 33. And you don't think there has been a change for the worse? No, absolutely not. Because you see, television particularly has changed the whole making of pictures tremendously. I think right. that has been a blessing to making motion pictures. Everything now is better and better and better.